This video is about limit laws, rules for finding the limits of sums, differences, products, and quotients of functions. Let's start with an example. Suppose that the limit as x goes to 7 of f of x is 30, and the limit as x goes to 7 of g of x is 2. What's the limit as x goes to 7 of f of x divided by negative 3 times g of x? Well, since f of x is heading towards 30, and g of x is heading towards 2, it makes sense that the quotient should head towards 30 divided by negative 3 times 2, or negative 5. In calculating this limit, by plugging in numbers for the components, we were actually using the limit loss, which I'll now state. Suppose that c is a constant, just some number, and that the limits as x goes to a of f of x and g of x exist as finite numbers, that is, not as limits that are infinity or negative infinity. Then the limit of the sum f of x plus g of x is equal to the limit of f of x plus the limit of g of x. In other words, the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. Similarly, the limit of the difference is the difference of the limits. The limit of c times f of x is just c times the limit of f of x. And the limit of the product is the product of the limits. The limit of the quotient is the quotient of the limits, provided that the limit of g of x is not equal to 0, since we can't divide by 0. Let's use these limit laws in an example to find the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared plus 3x plus 6 divided by x plus 9. Well, the limit rule about quotients allows us to rewrite this limit of a quotient as a quotient of limits. Provided that the limits of the numerator and denominator exist and that the limit of the denominator is not 0. But we'll see in a moment that these conditions do in fact hold. Next, we can use the limit rule about sums to rewrite the numerator as a sum of limits. And we can rewrite the limit in the denominator also as a sum of limits. Next, we can use the limit rule about products to rewrite the limit of x squared as the square of the limit. That's because x squared is really x times x, and so the limit of x squared is really the limit of x times x, which by the product rule is the limit of x times the limit of x, which is the limit of x quantity squared. Going back to the original problem, we can now use the limit rule about multiplying by a constant to rewrite the limit of 3 times x as 3 times the limit of x. And I'll just carry the rest forward. Now that we've got things broken down into bite-sized pieces, we can start evaluating some limits. Notice that the limit as x goes to 2 of x is just 2, because as x heads towards 2, x heads towards 2. So we can replace all these limits of x's by just the number 2. So we get 2 squared plus 3 times 2. Now notice that the limit as x goes to 2 of 6, well, 6 doesn't have any x's in it. So as x to heads towards 2, 6 stays at 6, and the limit here is just 6. So in my original problem, I can replace the si limit of 6 with 6. And on the denominator here, I get 2 plus 9. And after a little arithmetic, this simplifies to 16 elevenths. Notice that we could have gotten this answer a lot faster just by substituting in the value of 2 into our original expression. And in fact, that's the beauty of the limit laws. They allow us to evaluate limits of rational functions just by plugging in the number that x is going towards, as long as plugging in that number doesn't make the denominator 0. It's not nearly so simple when plugging in the value does make the denominator 0. And in the future, 
we'll build up a bunch of algebraic techniques for handling the situation. In this video, we've talked about the limit laws. It's important to note that these limit laws only apply if the limits of the component functions actually exist as finite numbers. If the limit of one or both of the component functions don't exist, then the limit rules just simply don't apply. And instead, we have to use other techniques to try to evaluate the limit of a sum, difference, product, or quotient.